Hi guys! This is the last of the six weeks of making your marks on paper. And this example that you're seeing right now is a stylized version of a flower arrangement on a table with some fruit and a picture. And this is what we're working on this week, on the, on the sixth week, is how do, we, how do we make something that looks stylized? So, this is an oil painting of a still life with fruit and a pitcher. And look at, again, how different it is than this one, which is also a still life, and it has a pitcher and fruit and flowers. They both have the same components, but this one is more stylized, meaning I didn't have to be really careful trying to make it look real. I could enjoy myself and just do what I wanted, whereas the oil painting... I was studying form and I wanted it to look very much like this is a copy because someone already bought the painting but luckily I had the copy so I, I made it so you guys could see it. Now I want to show you another example. Some of you have seen this in the studio. This is a realistic picture um, in colored pencils of my granddaughter. I, I don't know if I showed that last week or not. I don't think I did because I don't think I had it ready on uh, dark Hanson paper. And this is an an interpretation which is very stylized. See the difference between the two? There's a big difference. And this was a lot of fun, and you probably can tell it was a lot of fun, Where whereas this one was a lot of work because I had to make everything perfect. And it took a long time to get the side of that lip. That was a lot of work for me. But I can do it because I, I do this kind of work. I also wanted to show you, this is a stylized, ver stylized version of just something well, it's a, a totally imagination, and it's mixed media, because at the end of our class, on our sixth week, we're going to use all of the mediums that we've been using all week, if, if you want to, and do a mixed media project. I also thought it might be nice to show you this stylized house. So there's a real drawing with some ink. I think the whole thing is ink. And this is a different house, a little church. Well, actually, it's a little wooden building that we have in the studio. And that's my interpretation of it, and it's stylized. So that's kind of what stylization is about. And now if you come around the back, I'll show you how, to, my, how you might go about it. Okay. So, everybody, I know that sometimes it's going to be hard for some of you to even begin to think, how could I um, make something abstracted that I'm looking at? Well, don't forget, you could use some of the tools that you used in the last six weeks. For instance, the rambling line. You can use gesture. You could use modified contour. And the other thing I was thinking is most of the time you guys probably think that an artist just sits down and does it first time real. Well, that's not the case usually, at least not for me. So... I decided, how could I abstract a toothbrush? And I knew that that would be, I was thinking, I don't even know if I could do that. But I kind of think that that still looks like a toothbrush. It's kind of still realistic, but it's abstracted. And that was my first example. Then my second example, I thought, well, because I, I wanted to take up space more, and I kind of did it a second time. And I outlined it in something darker so that you guys could see it better. And see, you do it on scrap paper. You do it on old things that don't that you've messed up on because it's just you're just getting ready to figure out what you're going to do. And look at this is my third example. And now I've started to add some words, and I tried to figure out where I might put them and how to even do them. And I have a little version right here. I kind of really like that one right there. And then I did this one, and ah, the words sort of took over on me. But luckily, it's still just on the scrap paper. But I like the colors, and I like the way it fills the space. So if I was going to make this into a, a finished piece, I probably would make the letters smaller and, you know, put them in this area. But I tried that a few times before I did it. So let me show you this example. This is the pepper, um, you know, one of those things that you grate the pepper. And when we did the one-liners or, or the rambling line, do you see how that's really an interpretation? So when you do the rambling line, your hand is moving nicely like that. And so you can sort of get the idea of doing it like that. And I wanted to show you... <laughs> I thought, well now, this is, this, this is kind of fun. It's kind of a little bit like painting from the heart. I, I thought of it, it was supposed to be start out as a mug. And then... You know, something takes over inside you if you just let it happen. And pretty soon it had four handles and it wanted a lid, so there's a lid there. And then there was a, it's really kind of like mixed media because there's marker in here, there's stamping going on in here, and there's, um, this is pastel, the pan pastels in here. 
and this is paint, acrylic paint. So th this is kind of what you were supposed to do at the last, well, you didn't have to stylize the last exercise, but, but I did just because I, so I could show you guys. All right, so now let's see. I have a pepper that's realistic that I did, oh, many years ago, and it's an acrylic paint, and we keep this in our kitchen. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I might go about abstracting that. So I'd start with uh, I never used to use H's, you know, like a 2H or something, but this is a 2H because then I can go very light and figure out if I like it or not. So um, just get your hand going and say, oh, here's a pepper. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at how juicy that is! Nice big juicy pepper. And then I have this little. I'm looking at that and I'm saying, oh, okay. So there's a start of something fun and juicy. And let's see, I'd go like that, and I'd go like that. Now, if I end up liking it, then I can pick one of my markers over here. We use the water-based markers. We use the acrylic markers. We've used the Sharpies. Hmm. Ooh. I think I'll use this pretty magenta color. So I don't even know if you guys can see what I did. There. Look at that. This one looks feels like it's running out. It's a Marvy. <laughs> so that's one way you could start. You could pick up another color. I think I'm gonna. Oh, look at that's much better. Oh, and see, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be neat. You don't have to follow the line like if you're doing something realistic. I think I'll use a different color for the stem. Oh, this is pretty. Look about this. Let me see if that's too dark or not. Oh, that's pretty dark. Well, I'll do that for the outline. So what do you think? That's a good beginning. And then I can stylize it. Well, it already looks stylized because it doesn't look very real. But I could start to play with um, some shapes inside that. Whatever my heart wants to do. And what about that? Oh, and up here, I'll change colors again. Maybe I want purple because that's my favorite color. Let's see. Up here I could go, whoops. And I can do that. And then in here, I could make more divisions. I could even use a smaller marker if I wanted to. See, you get the idea. And in here, I could do dot. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Mm. See, I love dots. I love dots and dashes. And right here, it looks to me like patchwork might be nice. So I could do that, and I could put this one here. And that one there. And I can do that one there. I mean, no pepper would look like this, of course. But... It's my interpretation of the Peppa. So it's as simple as that, just having fun. And so now, before I end, I wanted to just go over with you about using mixed media. Just a little bit. Because you can do the rest of that yourself. You don't need any help with that. So, this is one of the pieces on the box. You know when you get Cheerios and you tear the box off and you can have what's left over? I gessoed the box very thinly, not too thickly. And then I used uh, Sharpie, I used um, acrylic paint, and I used the paint markers. And I, I took my finger and mushed out some of, the some of the things so that we wouldn't have to see it all and have it be so neat and perfect. Because look, this one's a little bit more neat and perfect, not as playful. This one's more playful looking. But this one has the Karen Dash that all of you liked, and it has the paint pens, and it has the black markers. And at the end, I put watercolor on it. So look at how nice the white stands out because of that. And I thought, this would be another good thing to tell you. We did this on week two with the watercolors. And if you're having trouble like making something look interesting, look at just by putting it on paper that has some texture, that stamping that Wendy was nice enough to do for us. And then we drew it in pencil, remember that? And then we did the watercolor. And then we did the Sharpie on top. Well, see how it makes it look interesting? It's not really an abstracted picture, but that could be the beginning of making something abstracted. And right now, I just wanted to tell you all the different ways you can do it. Now, if you can see this, if you can see that it's got a lot of texture. So this gesture on, I mean, gesso on this board was really thick in some places and thin in some places. And it's on my tea bag box, Lipton tea bag box. And it's nice when the paper's torn, like over here, that looks really good. So I've got in this one, it looks like I've got acrylic paint. I have watercolor. I have markers. It just looks it just looks like fun to me. And and this one is more like the stylized version and it has acrylic paint and marker and sharpie. You know, you know, you can always tell when it's sharpie because it looks like it's so perfect and neat as opposed to a little bit messier. 
those markers can look beautiful and messy. And I think I've already shown you this before, but this is uh, this is cardstock paper that we've put um, credit card acrylic paint on and splattered with the toothbrush, and then you can draw on top of that. And I drew this with um, with the stopper, the, uh, the dropper from an ink from an ink well, um, white white ink, I think it was called. And you can have fun with that. So you guys, now that this is our last of the six weeks. What you need to do is just kind of play. Play with everything. Try it all. Especially the ones that you liked. And so that's it for now. See you next time.